Thank you. Okay, thanks. So uh, the last presentation and the example of Finland uh, very well described that the transition to Phosphor-G is actually like strategical decision. And thanks, Jenny, for really great overview and intro into this theme. And I will continue this story, but this time I will use an example, use case of Inspire implementation here in Lithuania. So uh, in 20 minutes, I will try to be quick as possible and uh, tell you the 10 years long story, how we start building our national job portal, how we start and how we try implement Inspire using uh, software, uh, commercial software and outsourcing, and how we end up uh, with the implementation of Inspire using open source. Uh, so uh, let's go. Uh, I will not go into deep what is Inspire, but uh, in short, the Inspire is directive of, your, of European Commission uh, implementing spatial data infrastructure for whole Europe. And what this means, it means that uh, each country should implement uh, spatial data infrastructure and provide the spatial data about environmental to European Commission portal. So, uh, when we're talking about implementation of Inspire, three key points must be mentioned. Uh, the first point is legislation. It's uh, not the opinion, it's not that you want or not, don't want to implement it. it you should implement, and this should be in the law, of, uh, in the national law. So, it's not only about uh, opening the data and providing the data, but it's also about responsibility for the data, responsibility for the quality, uh, and so on. The second part of Inspire uh, is uh, about uh, specification. So how the data should be provided, in what kind of structure, in what kind of services. So uh, taking these two parts, it seems that everything is fine. You are ready to just go and implement everything. But uh, however, the technology are not described. So each country decides how they will implement Inspire what kind of uh, software they will use, what kind of architecture they will use, and so on. So just briefly overlook how in Lithuania uh, the data provision uh, is uh, described, or, or is this description is in the law, actually. So each state, member, each state institution who is dealing with the spatial data should provide the data to the national portal. And the national portal then transform every data and provide to the, national, uh, to the European Commission Geo Portal. So the key point here is uh, national Geo Portal, and this is like one access point for uh, spatial data to European Commission. And it seems that it's a great idea because it's one investment, one responsibility, and so on. But for the company who's administrating this national portal, it's quite tough. Uh, uh, thing because you should dealing with, uh, for in our case, with 24 data providers with uh, more than 100 data sets and some of data providers they don't even know that difference between GIS and Excel and sometimes they, they even don't know that they have the spatial data and you then try to explain, let's give me a spatial data and you get, the, for example, Word document. So, and uh, you as implementer of uh, National Job Portal should translate somehow this and provide in, in the strict structure uh, uh, to the Inspire Job Portal. So, so brief overlook how the history uh, looks. Um, uh, implementing national portal in Lithuania. So we started in 2006, I think one year earlier than Finland, <laughs> yeah, to build our national geo portal. I think this was the, the first try to implement national portals uh, in Europe, uh, inspired by Inspire. Uh, and uh, then in 2007, Inspire Directive uh, entered into the forces. So at this time, it was one of the biggest IT projects in Lithuania, actually. And uh, of course, uh, the whole uh, commercial vendors has a big eyes on this, uh, and we end up with a big stack of S3 software together with uh, such brand uh, names like Oracle, Microsoft, Navision, uh, uh, IBM, IBM WebSphere. It's, it's yeah. It's, yeah, it, this was the story, uh, yeah? But I will focus on two next stages where we're implementing the INSPIRE uh, uh, requirements. So first stage, uh, it was uh, performed in 2012 and 2014, and uh, this implementation was based using uh, commercial software, 
and outsource it. And uh, uh, the next stage uh, implementation was made by us using open source uh, tools. So let's see uh, the difference. Uh, so implementation using open source, uh, implementation using commercial software. So the scope at, that, at this time was not so big. It's like 10 teams uh, from first Annex who is not familiar with uh, what is Annex. The Annex is the group of teams. So first Annex is about uh, reference data. It's like transportation, uh, hydrology, parcels, and so on. So implementation at... So at this time, in 2012, uh, Inspire implementation was quite new and little known technical uh, challenge. And uh, also, uh, we have the history, the first GeoPortal was already implemented on top of the commercial software. So at this time, the decision to just uh, outsource everything, to call the tender and buy whatever you can buy <laughs> uh, was, uh, looks like a really uh, normal solution. Uh, but uh, let's see how we end up. Uh, so just briefly how technical it, uh, it looks. At this time, actually, this was quite impressive uh, technological stack. Uh, we have uh, Microsoft SQL Server for eight cores. Uh, and um, uh, we store the raw data, and actually we have the second database uh, 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 with the structure for Inspire. This was a, like GIA database template, uh, which is provided by the uh, our GIS Inspire extension. They uh, they created the extension for Inspire. Uh, so uh, we have uh, FME uh, for core servers to just transforming raw data sets to Inspire teams. And then we have uh, the whole company equipped with the Arc Info and Arc View. Right now it is not calling it like that, but, but uh, this was the story. Uh, for data management and publishing the services and configuring it. And uh, we have 16 cores uh, RJS server for that. Uh, who's familiar that with the price range, <laughs> do, you, do you know that uh, each, uh, the, the license is, is per core, so 16 cores for 10 teams, so it was yeah, impressive uh, by the amount of cores and of course by the amount of money. <laughs> and uh, it's funny that, uh, not funny, it's interesting fact that we actually use open source tool, the S3 Geo Portal is still open source uh, project, uh, S3 Geo Portal, so it's for metadata management. Uh, and uh, from this metadata portal, we just provide the data to Inspire. So it's the most uncomfortable to speak about this part, but I will, uh, it must be done. Uh, so first of all, I just um, uh, came to the project, it uh, came to the company at the end of the project, and immediately we faced off that the very poorly documented and overcomplicated uh, transformation yeah, as I mentioned here, transformation models. So uh, we just don't get it how it was done. Uh, another problem that uh, services still worked in reasonable slow, even if we have 16 cores for that. So, and the, the next problem that we don't know it how to improve it actually, because data structure was provided by the software. You know, you just get the template and you cannot change it. And another tricky part, that if you want to implement new team, you must wait for the new release. And you depend on this release, and you hope that your license not expires before the new release. Uh, you know, and this goes to dependency on investment. And if you are a budget institution, these investments are really strict. You must plan three years uh, uh, for two years, your budget. So, uh, no space for customization, and uh, you have a team, but this team cannot actually improve anything, or, or you only can deal with the, how to attract new investment and buy the license. And uh, yeah, this situation was not very uh, interesting for us, and we knew it that uh, second implementation part is already on our way because this was only 10 teams and the next part will be for 34 teams. So 24 teams because 34 teams are uh, uh, all the teams for Inspire. So what should we do? Or we should 
collect the money and call for the tender and expect that everything will be implemented in conventional software or we must choose another way. And then, boom, <laughs> in, in 2017, uh, there was a Phosphog conference in Europe, in Paris. Uh, so, ah. <laughs> great man. <laughs> Do you remember me? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was like uh, open at our eyes because uh, they have a, a special dedicated session for Inspire implementation and they just draw a path how we should probably implement. And uh, also we'll use uh, the uh, possibility to special uh, thanks uh, the vTransform and Geo Solution a specialist, uh, they actually help us a lot, probably even knew that they are doing this because they provide a lot of materials, a lot of uh, workshops, videos, a lot of hands-on, very detailed uh, implementation uh, examples. So this helps a lot to make this decision because we knew it, that there is a lot of, that there's a lot of material, but we can read it, we can learn it, and we can try to implement it. So this was really like a big yeah, move forward for us. So uh, this is our stack, how we implemented the Inspire, the second stage of Inspire. So it was 24 teams to, in, in, uh, to implement. So nothing very special for database. We use uh, PostgreSQL uh, with extension with PostGS, of course, and PG Crone. Actually, I really like PG Crone, the idea that you can do a repeatedly works uh, in the database, for example, re-indexing or killing the idle tasks or so on. So the most resources was uh, spent on uh, GeoServer, but this is because my idea was that probably we should try to publish every, uh, everything with dynamic WMS services. Uh, it, it's not because uh, we cannot publish WMTS services, but Inspire services and Inspire data updates frequently. And uh, they are right now used very rare because uh, there are not very a lot of users for Inspire data already. So the idea was if we publish like WMS, we, after the update, we don't need to recache anything and so on. So we tried to just give 32 gigabytes of RAM and just uh, leave it and it works really, really well. And of course, we uh, use GSR with extensions for Inspire and App Schema. This was the main point to use GSR back then. Uh, for the metadata uh, server, we use GeoNetwork. It's, I think, the, one of the greatest tool actually for Inspire. And not even for Inspire, but uh, this is really uh, created for, we help you to implement Inspire. Yeah, so uh, we use this for the metadata creation and also for linking metadata, describing metadata, and uh, for providing a CSV service to Inspire GeoPortal. Also, we use GDial, uh, and yeah, for the proxy, we use Apache, which is not, not, not necessary to mention. But uh, desktop workplace is uh, uh, Windows, and we use standard Windows workstation with uh, uh, Hail Studio and QGIS. So you see the server side is completely on Ubuntu, and we not change the comfortable place for our employees. They, they still can use Windows, uh, whatever they want. Yeah? And, uh, Data provision we separate in two parts. One part is for data that updates uh, rarely, and uh, another part is for data that updates frequently. So, uh, geological geology team it quite well described uh, rare data updates because you know geology not changed frequently, usually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we read the data using GDAL from WFS and then upload it to PostgreSQL and we call it, this is like a source database. And then with Hail Studio, we create the mapping schema. The mapping schema, it's, I can explain really simple. Here you have like Inspire team uh, structure. Here you have uh, your raw data schema and just, you know, drag, drop uh, the uh, linking uh, of the, what, from where uh, the data should go to where. Uh, so the Hale Studio creates like a, this mapping schema in XML and what gives us also, uh, it can export uh, the data to GML. Uh, 
And then GML can be published as Atom service uh, through the Geo network, and Atom service is a predefined download and acceptable for Inspire. And also what we, he, we have done, then using GDAL, we transform the, and flattening this GML uh, and load it to the PostgreSQL database. So G, uh, GDAL can uh, uh, resolve the X links or uh, of and also uh, transform attributes to table fields. So we have nicely structured data for publishing. And then we're publishing using GeoServer and WMS services. This is not very fancy, just WMS service. Okay, so we have like source database and uh, publish ready database and GML for the data download. And uh, this is more interesting uh, part, we have meteorological uh, features, they update each hour, so each hour we run scheduled tasks, GDAL just download the data and put it on the PostgreSQL. But here we don't use the static files for downloading and we don't uh, transform uh, again into the publishing data uh, base. We actually create the mapping schema and then using uh, uh, app schema uh, plugin, we just uploaded this transformation model to GS server. And actually at the end you have WMS and WFS service which acts li act like a uh, inspire structure but actually reads the data from raw data. So it's, you're just updating the raw data, but your services are acting like they are Inspire services. This is great, but you should be very careful because if you have a lot of features, like, I don't know, LiDAR data or something like that, this, not, this will not work. This is a really great example when you have like small data. In this case, we have like few hundreds of points uh, with the, uh, uh, measurements, uh, hydro measure, me measurements, so it's uh, really uh, fit for us. And the results, we, in short, we complete not only the Inspire 2 scope, but actually we moved the first project results to this uh, open source way because we just used one stack and this stack is actually meant to be understandable uh, in the way the Inspire works. So experience and what we do differently. Uh, lessons learned from making mistakes, actually, I, I think that th this project was like a, a national project with a strict plan and so on, but actually we act like a, like a startup, I think. And uh, what should be mentioned, dedicated budget for specialized training and supporting. We try everything by our own, but actually to spend like for a few days of uh, 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 life uh, lessons or, or for trainings, it will be, yeah, we, we, we could then like immediately start to building something. Because to understand Inspire, you should really learn a lot of resources and so on. So, so it, this way is also good because now we are, feel that we are really specialists in this. But uh, if you want to spend less time just thinking about this, because if you not dedicated in budget, after all, you cannot buy it. In our cases, we want to buy it, but in budget, we don't have this raw, so it, yeah, it lost it. And uh, try to publish the services immediately you have, and don't try to cover all errors from validators. Actually, this is a little bit, this sounds crazy, but actually it is, because we spend a lot of tons of times to try to figure out why validator give us uh, error, but once it said that uh, this is error invalidator. So, you know, <laughs> just you spend it two weeks dealing on this and, you know, this it's, but uh, to try to uh, immediately, uh, yeah, to try to immediately publish the data uh, gives you, you know, motivation that, okay, one part is done, let's move on, on our part. And, uh, this is a few more, uh, more technical tips. I think you will find it in the, uh, my presentation I will share or, 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 or this will be shared. Uh, and uh, the, the most uh, interesting I think for us was that don't be, don't over complicate everything and don't over engineer everything because uh, you can start with the less and then grow up and not with the start with the 16 cores and end up without having nothing actually. Yeah, so it's uh, probably the, my advice for, for you who's trying to implement Inspire or whatever uh, directive you have here. Yeah, so 
Thank you.